let's try that again. Welcome Cowboys Nation and YouTubers. I am VA Dallas Cowboy fan. If you haven't already, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I usually don't do this, but I am actively now seeking to get 1,000 subscribers because I want to live stream off my phone. I want to be able to give y'all instant reactions to what's going on right where I am instead of having to make videos and waiting forever for it to post. I'd like to give y'all instant reactions. So that's my drive now to get 1,000 subscribers. But in today's cowboy news, if you haven't been on my channel before, I like to take the next week to basically grade out the offense, defense, and coaching and look on any other issues that may have appeared during the game and during the week. Today, I'm going to focus on the offense. Tomorrow, I'm going to focus on the defense. And Wednesday, I am going to focus on the coaching. Uh, if there's extra time, I'm going to throw in the special teams. So, well, first bit of news out the way. Jimmy Johnson has decided to name Troy Aikman as his presenter for his Hall of Fame induction. I think that's apropos. I like the decision. I can't wait for it. And he is well deserving of it. Next, let's get to our offense. Quarterback play. Okay, we all knew what we were going into that game with. A seventh round rookie. And if he played anywhere near comparable, he was going to probably do something. Now, he tried. I mean, he has... A, a completely weird and wicked spiral. Uh, granted, I don't think these receivers were ready for it because it kind of bounced off their chest a couple times for drops. Uh, other times, you could see he was a little bit inaccurate throwing balls high. Uh, he wasn't leading his receivers a couple times and they had to stop or come back for the ball and that threw them off of what they were doing on their routes. But, uh, I give him a C. Uh, Danucci played the best he could for what they gave him. They simplified the playbook for him. Uh, he's just got to basically read his progressions a little better. He probably, granted, he didn't have time. Uh, so he kind of focused just on uh, uh, Michael Gallup, trying to get him the ball a whole lot more often because he was one-on-one -on -one a lot more. And a lot of passes, if they were spot on, he probably could have taken to the house. But uh, he didn't really get that rapport with Coop or uh, Lamb, like uh, some of the other quarterbacks. But if he continues to be our quarterback, I think something may happen. You never know. It was you know one week of preparation to get ready for this, and it is what it is. Uh, he can scramble. We saw that. Uh, he's he's trying to work on his ball placement. You can see that. Uh, due to the facts that he even tried to uh, advance plays when he was near the sideline. And instead of walking out of bounds like most quarterbacks, he tried to sidearm it to a receiver. Uh, it did not work the two times he tried it. Uh, the second time was really not on him. Amari Cooper accidentally stepped out of bounds, so if he had uh, caught the ball, they'd have thrown a flag, so it was just best that the ball dropped and they just took that loss of down without losing yardage. So, on average, I give him average. Is he my quarterback of the future going forward? In my opinion, yes. Uh, people say sit him down. He was horrible and this, that, and the other. But he played better than Andy Dalton. I'm sorry. 
Andy Dalton's not going to come back and make this team any better. The guy couldn't even do anything when he was in. So what's he going to do against Pittsburgh? The guy couldn't beat Pittsburgh when he was with Cincinnati. And he's really got less to work with now than he did in Cincinnati. So there's no way even him coming back will save us against Pittsburgh or even make it competitive. So I'm not wishing for Andy Dalton to come back to start. If he comes back, he could be my backup. But that's just my opinion. Running backs. They did the best they could with what they got. You got a couple wildcat formations with Zeke, but you knew that wasn't going to work because Zeke was no threat to actually throw it. And, I mean, that would have been even more spectacular with the play calling. I think they should have actually tried to get Zeke to throw the ball some, maybe. If they were going to try trick plays, it might have been wise to actually put that uh, creativity to the test because that would have thrown the defense off for real if Zeke could have completed a pass. But it didn't happen. And uh, between Pollard and Zeke, they ran for a lot of good ground yards, boy. They, whoo, there wasn't too many holes and a lot of times their runs were uh, cut short due to people ankle tackling, basically. Uh, if they could have avoided the ankle tackles, there was a lot of yardage that they could have ate up. They just couldn't get past these lower ankle and lower leg tackles. So I grade them on a B minus. It was hard fought yards that they did get on the ground. Uh, the screen game for them never came in like usual. And uh, I mean, there was one late, but it didn't matter by then. Uh, the blitz pickup by Zeke to let uh, the timing of the Nucci get a pass off late in the game. If he did not get that uh, blitz pickup, the corner blitz pickup, the Nucci was going to get killed. Let, let's face it. <laughs> uh, he, he, Zeke got in there and tried his best to put his body in the way between him, the quarterback, and the corner coming. So they ground out as much as they could. Uh, we already knew they were going to stack the box against the run since everybody in the mama knew that Zeke was going to have to carry the load without uh, a competent quarterback. Wide receivers. You can only do but so much if you can't get them the ball, right? Uh, their drops were inexplicable. They were in their hands, and they just, they're just just consistently dropping passes somewhere in their chests. Um, I don't know what's going on. It's like they're losing focus when they're not getting targets, and it's starting to show up uh, on a weekly basis. ZD Lamb last week. Uh, this week, Coop dropped a couple. Uh is just starting it ridiculous when you don't have competent quarterback play, your receivers go down to your level. Uh, for them, D, uh, it would be an F, if, uh, except that Gallup had a couple dice catches and uh, their triple end of rounds and fake reverse end of rounds and reverses made the wide receivers look good when they actually had space to run. But when you can't get on the ball, they just can't do anything. Uh, next, tight ends. Dalton Schultz is showing that if Blake Jarwin can come back healthy next season, and we do get an offseason, and uh, I don't know who's going to be our quarterback, but if it's Dak, you can have Jarwin and Schultz out there, man. These guys are, can tear it up. They need to work on their run blocking, but when you let them out on routes, you got something. I, I like it. Schultz is uh, laying down right in the gaps of the zone, and he's making himself available. And that's what you need in a tight end to be your security blanket, and he is doing every bit of that right now. So I give them a B. They're, they're doing their darndest out there. Blake Bell as well. Uh, now, our atrocious offensive line. 
It's not going to change, but Terrence still needs to go. I can't say it anymore. He's not as atrocious as Chaz Green, but there's too many times in the game that's been decided because Terrence still misses on his blocks. And our quarterbacks are getting killed. They're fumbling or they're throwing interceptions because they got to get past the guy that's rushing at them off of his side. Uh, granted, they played a little better with Zach Martin back in the lineup, but it wasn't enough. And they clearly couldn't get running lanes on the right side of the field because the guy was just in the way. He's missing his blocks if he's not just darn right, just out there mucking up. The guy just can't play. And we're just going to keep trotting him out there. Stephen Jones says, why put Zach Martin out there? Do you want a clean inside pocket? Or do you want... Uh, a freaking uh, your tackles to be better. Uh, I granted, I'd like a cleaner inside pocket because you can step up and either run or see the field better. But you're getting obliterated when your right tackle's still whiffing on his blocks, and you know you ain't got time to roll out. Especially if you're righty, if you're right-handed and that right tackle misses his block, you can't roll out to that direction that you need to go because it's over. There's just too many times that running plays were blown up in the backfield because they ran right past the guy and were in the backfield before the ball was even handed off. We can't keep having that week in and week out. Terrence Steele is just going to, he's just not it. And no matter what Stephen Joe says about him being possible future, he's delusional on that one. Uh, so I give the offensive line a D+. Plus. When it when they were moving down the field on running plays, they seemed to click. When it was no huddle, they seemed to click. Uh, they picked up their assignments on a couple of those end of rounds and stuff. But uh, when they went back to basic play calling, that offensive line just couldn't stand up. Uh, especially when they were calling for zero blitzes and uh, corner blitzes and stuff. These guys just couldn't hold their own. Sorry. Uh, Tyler Biotish and Zach Martin are probably the only high spots on that uh, offensive line right now. That's a shame. But it is what it is. Next week, we have, we have Pittsburgh. Our offense against their defense it doesn't look great on paper or in action. So we'll have to see. We will have to see. Um, I apologize to my wife and to you guys. I made a video before the game saying that I didn't think we would make more than three points, but we made more than three points. Granted, it was a lot of three points that we had to make to even get to our nine, but it wasn't enough. My wife said seven points, so she got it closer. Uh... I mean, we stalled ourselves a bunch of times, but it is what it is. We got to clean up those uh, mistakes with uh, the offensive holding. We got to clean up the fumbles. And some of that's directly correlated with Terrence Steele, as he is the guy that basically these guys are getting free runs at our quarterback past him and causing these fumbles. Uh, we clean up some of the mistakes a little bit better. I think we can uh, do it a lot better. Zeke did not fumble this week, so that was a plus. And offense in general. The trick plays are only tricky if they work. But once you do it too many times and people figure it out, you tend to lose yardage like we did. So overall offense, D plus. That put you on average, but once y'all got to the 30, 35 of the Eagles, your ineptitude just rears its ugly head every time. And you pretty much put us in bad places for field goals. I mean, granted you had a nice chip shot 59 yarder, but other than that, there's no highlights for this offense, really. Uh, they're going to have to do what they got to do to try to win. I get it. 
And uh, again, if we have to march Andy Dalton out or Ben DiNucci, I'm taking DiNucci. I understand that the game is too, uh, a bit fast for him because he's not ready for that kind of stuff. But if you gave him time and kept him going out there, maybe he'll get it. I mean, he can only improve. Andy Dalton can't improve anymore. All he can do is go backwards. And it showed already. Uh, Danucci's first time out, he got us nine points at least. Could have been 12. And that's more than Andy Dalton could do. He's averaged six and a half. So, there you go. That is my offensive analysis for today. That is my quick hit on Jimmy Johnson naming his presenter and Troy Aikman for the Hall of Fame induction. And, yeah. Whew. I don't know what to tell you. It is what it is. We're a bad, god-awful team, but granted, we got to finally see some originality and creativity from our offensive play caller. It was just a little too much sometimes. But that's all I got for you. Again, thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing. Comment down below. Thank you for sticking around this long. I hope you guys have a good, safe Monday. Take care. And if anything happens, we'll get it to you. Be a Dallas Cowboy fan. Out.